four Ps called uh, the product, price, place, and promotion uh, propo proposed by Jeremy McCarthy. Um, and uh, from there, it took on. And in 1960s, you can see it. Uh, the whole concept of marketing has subdivided into three major areas uh, called the marketing strategies, consumer behavior, and marketing research. I'm not going to talk uh, more about marketing research today because that will be slightly deviated from what we are talking today. So I'll be a bit focusing on uh, marketing and consumer behavior mostly uh, around the concepts of uh, consumer behavior. That's what I'm going to talk today. Uh, as I mentioned, the evolution of the whole concept of marketing, it's uh, unified with the four P's of marketing, product, price, place, promotion. That opened an arena for the mass market of uh, products. Uh, that means uh, if you have a right product, if you have it with the right price, you have with the right promotion, and if you have the right channel of distribution, it could be able to sell or market to customers. So that opened the doors for something called mass marketing. Mass marketing means uh, one similar kind of product for a large number of customers. Later, it moved to STP. STP means segmentation, targeting, and positioning. Segmentation, targeting, and positioning means you cannot see one product has been accepted by all customers Everybody has a different attitude, different preferences, different style. So you need to have a market divided more specifically according to the needs and wants of the customers. So it has moved to STP. It's called uh, uh, how do you segment a market and then how to target it and how to position that product distinctively, distinctively in the marketplace. Then in 1980s, the concept of competitive strategies came up. The key person behind is Michael Porter, the Harvard professor. He came out with uh, the five forces of uh, uh, competition and strategy, and that is quite relevant even today. Uh, so 80s, the competition, competition started picking up. So uh, the, uh, there were a lot of talks about how to beat the competition and uh, what are the ways one can uh, really tackle the competition. Then moving on, uh, uh, late 80s and early 90s, the concept of services marketing started emerging uh, because services marketing uh, actually has the real backbone of most of the economies in the world. Uh, if you see uh, the product and the manufacturing, um, the overall pie in, in the GDP was much lower as compared to the services marketing, or the, the, the GDP that, that has been contributed by services. Uh, if you see the major pie comes from now today, services like uh, banking, insurance, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are the major sectors actually driving the whole economy in the world. Um, then uh, in 90s uh, and uh, Towards the end of 90s, the concept of relationship marketing came. So relationship marketing is actually an extension of the services marketing. Uh, people realize that uh, it is not only just acquiring new customers, but also it's very important for you to retain and, uh, and uh, grow with customers and know what is the actual lifetime value, what one can derive out of uh, the customer. So, Retention of customers has become the mantra uh, during 1990s, uh, towards the end of 90s, 1990s. So uh, um, uh, towards the end of 1990s, when I was doing my PhD, I took relationship marketing as the, uh, the, the main theme and my whole dissertation and thesis has uh, revolved around concepts of relationship marketing. So that was the prominence of relationship marketing towards the end of 90s. Uh, then uh, things again started changing and started advancing. Social media has become the most powerful media in the world. And uh, if you see that uh, we have 
bigger nations we have nations bigger than china and india in terms of population uh, today we say there is a facebook nation there is a whatsapp nations because there are more than 2 billion subscribers to this medias so you you would really see that these uh, nations or these social medias are become very powerful and marketing cannot really ignore has to have an interface and collaborations with the the social media then uh, marketing uh, over a period of time again started concentrating more on emerging markets emerging markets like china india africa uh have become very very attractive to to uh manufacturers because the markets in the united states or the markets in europe started getting saturated so they have to really move on to emerging markets like china india and africa today you see these are the most emerging markets in the world and it is very attractive i i remember the concept of uh uh, uh the the inverting uh the the, the pillar inverting uh, the pyramid the bottom of the pyramid concept where how do you make uh, products and services more affordable to emerging economies and things like that then the concept of the societal marketing has become very popular societal marketing has changed the whole uh, view of marketing putting the whole thing with a new lens uh, marketing for a better world uh people started recognizing the importance of climate change child labor unfair trade practices etc etc so there was a great shift towards sustainability and sustainable business so business has to be more of responsible and uh, they really need to understand what is uh, the requirement of the society and uh, how it has to be more sustainable uh if you if you see that two uh, the proponents in the history adam smith talked about business is for profit it doesn't need to consider anything else but with the views of uh, milton uh, friedman in 1976 he won the nobel prize for uh bringing up the concept of social responsibilities of business and business has not only just to make profit but has a as social being as a social being as great responsibility to a society so the marketing is getting very noble and more attractive uh to the society even today uh then we can see a, a, a emerging thinking about the buyers and users uh before that we all call it as a customer one word for buyer or a user but the the concept of marketing started looking at the buyer and con- the user as two different uh, uh, aspects because uh, the the interface required at these two uh, levels are different uh, so for example a buyer might be concentrating more on the price aspects uh, convenience like uh, uh, the tran- the the transaction cost and easy to do business uh, so for example in in the united in, in the united states uh, amazon has very popular even in india is uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very popular uh, you know e-commerce platform in india at flipkart in china alibaba all this started emerging because of this study uh, into the buyers convenience and uh, pricing and things so uh, these sort of e-commerce started providing a great opportunity and uh, a great advantage for the buyers but when you look at the user user is the one actually using it not necessary all the time the buyer and user is the, the same same one so the user he is looking mostly for a performance value when he is consuming the product so uh, a lot of emerging research has started in 90s and 20 in in, in 90s and uh, 20s um in terms of uh, understanding the buyer and user concept it's also started focusing on the customer centricity uh saying that customer is everything everything you need to uh, revolve around customers and uh, things like that so customer centricity has become the mantra for many businesses and you need to really understand what the customer is really required and then uh, online businesses started emerging as i mentioned earlier 
uh, everything uh, become online and um, there was a great push of digitalization, modernization and uh, moving on to online, whether it's a distribution, online distribution or online advertising and marketing or things like that has become very, very powerful. This is where we stopped just prior to the COVID-19. This is exactly the kind of themes I used to teach in my class or in my research or my areas of uh, 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 teaching and research. Uh, but then uh, the COVID-19 started early this year and started battering uh, every parts of the world. So I would like to add two extra questions here to the evolution of the marketing, maybe we can think more towards that in this webinar. How do we ensure the health and safety of our customer? That can be one of the driving forces for every business needs to ponder in the coming days. How do we ensure health and safety of our customers? We can also ask a second question as an addition to this whole concept of marketing. How do we create positive experience in this new reality. It is not only just delivering product and service to customers, but it's very important. How do we really create that kind of positive experience in this new reality? We call that the new normal uh, in today's world. So this is uh, the spectrum of the, the whole concept of marketing. Let me move on to the spectrum of consumer behavior which is the second uh, arm or aspects of the whole uh, marketing concept. So in the evolution of consumer behavior, if you look at uh, consumer behavior whole started evolving with the motivational research. So people wanted to know why consumers are motivated with certain things. So that was the whole evolution of the consumer behavior. And then uh, started uh, getting the consumer opinions and intentions uh, through whether they are going for this or going for that and what is your opinion whether you like or not liking all sort of things they started uh, grabbing and, and and grappling with the surveys and researchers and uh, later people started understanding that it's not only the opinion opinion sometime won't work you really need to have the real behavior so sometimes the opinion does not stay very well. That is why uh, many of the market research which conducted or many of the test uh, advertising which conducted failed miserably because the opinions and intention does not accurately measure through surveys and researches or through a questionnaire. So it started moving towards a new dimension which is called